Welcome to the constellation of Taurus. I hope by now you would have watched my early video talking about Aries and how to utilize Aries in one's life. In this video we're going to talk about the age of Taurus, what kind of things happen during the age of Taurus and how to utilize Taurus in one's life. So let us begin into Taurus. Now let us first draw the symbol of Taurus. Hopefully most people would know what Taurus looks like. Okay, so here you have a crescent and a circle. Now what does it mean? The crescent is actually the moon. This actually is a symbol of the moon. You know, when we, when we talk about uh, Taurus, we see that the moon represents the crescent. And that, that's a half moon, you know. When you look at the, uh, the Quran, for example, the book itself has a moon crescent. And this is why Ramadan is performed during the time uh, of a new moon. Some do know, and it ends during the time uh, when the moon is, is, is waning. And obviously, this is a representation of the full moon. So Taurus within itself has, um, has a very powerful indication with the moon. Okay, so they also say that um, when the moon is in Taurus, meaning that this symbol here is moving into the constellation of Taurus, it is exalted. It means it's, it's at its best position. It has a, a wonderful frequency of energy. Hence why you would have this symbol. Okay, and uh, the, reason, the reason why the ancient chose this symbol. Now, okay, let us go into the story of Taurus and how Taurus is utilized in one's life and uh, the symbology of Taurus because most people don't look at the symbol at what it means and how does it tie into the mythology and how does it tie into the life that we indulge in so Taurus people let's get busy okay taurine tauroclic acid and found in the fluids of the muscles and lungs of many animals okay the word bull is from the Indo-European root bell to blow swell derivative bow bulk boulder bull phallus a representation of a penis and testes as an embodiment of generative power so the Taurus is very fixed its energy is projective yes it represents the phallus so in essence it also represents Osiris but we're gonna get into that who is Osiris an ancient deity from Egypt okay so Asaru is another name its original name obviously so let's get into the deeper aspects of Taurus in that sense so when you look at the etymology of the words you find out its roots and where it kind of derives from so the bull of Apis. This is the um, the representation of the bull. Okay, Apis was an ancient deity. He represented the bull in ancient Kemet or Egypt, as we know, and he personified that uh, embodiment of Taurus. So you here you see the same symbology that was founded in Egypt. Okay, that now is used in our modern time. Okay, so. Apis in the Egyptian mythology, okay, in Egyptian mythology, Apis or Hapis, alternatively spelled Happy Ankh, was a bull deity worshipped in Memphis, okay, ceremonial burials of bulls indicate that ritual sacrifice was part of the worship of the early cow deities, and a bull might represent a king who became a deity after death. He was entitled the renewal of life of the Manfit god Ptah. <coughs> but after death, he became Osiropis. The Osira Apis, just as dead humans were assimilated to Osiris, the king of the underworld. So here we find that Apis became a deity after death. He became the resurrection of Osaru, Osiris. Asa, he became the resurrection of that. So he, he, he had that embodiment and then he became that, you know. 
So here we also find the connection to Ptah. Now, Ptah gave birth to um to to Apis from a lightning. So then it gave birth to Apis, right? And then from there you find the uh, the bull Apis, which then um, uh, personified itself as a deity. Okay, All right. So here you see the symbol of um, the bull again, and you see Apis next to um, to the bull. Now, let's look into Isis and the representation and the relationship between um, the evolutional process of what happened during that time. So, um, okay, uh, before we get into that, I would like to first mention that um, that when the age of Taurus was around, we also found that the age of Taurus was to do with building, building a society, construction, doing things step by step, sticking to the accordant structure, building buildings, building pyramids, you know, um, a lot of the buildings were constructed during the age of Taurus. Everything was beautiful. Now we look at, look we're looking at in, in heritage as well. The, the 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 what 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 they inherit in that time was built. So as you can see in the modern time now, you find that in ancient Egypt or Kemet, you find buildings like um, the pyramids, you know, the hieroglyphics, you know, the writings. All of those type of things are founded in the monuments. These have been preserved throughout centuries. Now, how and why? Now, you have to look at the age of Taurus. The age of Taurus showed you the type of structure that was constructed to withhold this powerful source of energy, this powerful source of energy through limestones and structures which held them together. Let's keep, let's keep going. Isis now. Isis. Frequently, the statue of Isis was ac accompanied by the figure of a large black or white hulk, ox, and that's obviously the bull. The ox represents either Osiris as Taurus, Osiris as Taurus. So Osiris became the embodiment or embodiment of Taurus. Okay, the bull of the zodiac or Apis, an animal sacred to Osiris, became because of its particular marking and colouring. Among the, among the Egyptians, the bull was a beast of burden. Hence, the presence of the animal was a reminder of the labours patiently performed by nature that all creatures may have life and health. So, this tells you that um, Osiris represents that, represented that energy. And you can see here in the image that Isis then embodied this. She embodied this. So when obviously Osiris or, or, or Apis died, it then went into through to Isis, okay, and then the bull came through. And so you have the horns. Later in the Egyptian mythology, um, which we'll go into right now, let me flick through the page. So later you find here that the symbol for Taurus was not the bull, but the cow. And not just any old cow, but the original holy cow herself, which is Hathor. Hathor is actually the actual original holy cow. You know, in the, in the Indian um, mythology, they believe in the holy cow. And this is why they don't eat the, the cow. The, the, the cow had a symbolical meaning which dates you back all the way to Egypt. And who is Hathor? Hathor is the goddess of um of dendera she represents the whole you know the constellation of dendera is 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 founded in um in her temple here you find airplanes spaceships um look at the picture here you find airplanes spaceships different kind of monuments which represents different various shape variations of of uh, ancient times that happened you know they, they they noted all these things down so we find that during the age of Taurus these things were noted down into walls and structured in a way to calculate and to demonstrate the powers of the universe so they even say that okay when you look at modern astrology we find that Aries 
starts the whole equin equinox and obviously the, the beginning of the the year starts in Aries but essentially when you look at the celestial bodies um, as it appears in the sky we actually find that it starts in the constellation of Taurus so Taurus actually embodies the energy of uh, the spring equinox really and truly but now we have to look at the sidereal calendar sidereal calendar is a different calendar to the actual calendar that we have in this modern day so we use this modern source of calendar which is obviously tied into the seasonal astrology which is tied into the psychological behaviors of the human mind so now let's move on slowly okay only when the, the, the ball of desire is mastered and sexual force controlled can the disciple progress towards initiation. That is a symbology meaning to say that once you control your desire, once you control your lust, your fixed attention, which is the bull, once you control that, then you're ready for initiation. And that sexual energy is preserved. And that's the Osiris energy here that we're talking about. When, when, when Osiris was reborn, you know, you know, he understood something, so he was reborn and became something else from the Apis, okay, from Happy, sorry, the um, the, the deity. So, let's look into the symbol of Taurus a bit more and the representation of Taurus a bit more. So, fertility and creativity are also keynotes of Taurus, and light, illumination, and sound, as expression of this creative force, are connected with this constellation. The interpreter of the divine voice, as Taurus was called in ancient Egypt, can be paraphrased into Christian terminology and called the word made flesh. The end result of the work undertaken in Taurus and the results of its influence is the glorification of matter, the transmuting of the less than perfect parts of ourselves into material that in no way hinders the light of the soul pouring through. When the vehicle have been purified completely, then the light does indeed shine through. This is why the moon is traditionally exalted in Taurus. The lesser luminary represents the form of matter. The Taurian process ultimately produces purifies beings who radiates the light perfectly throughout the influence of Venus. The ruler of this sign and ever the symbol of earthly and heavenly love and both spiritual, as aspirational and carnal desires. The evolved disciple born in Taurus ultimately embodies only love aspects, no longer ruled by desires of any kind. They manifest love and create beauty through the art of or the quality of their lives because of the Venetian influence Taurus embodies. Okay, so Taurus embodies life. Now it's governed by Venus. Okay, here we are. Well, we're gonna get into this right now. Here is Venus. Okay, I, I've done the picture grab a bit wrong. You know, uh, it's my my Virgo energy that kicks in now. I like things to be precise. So here we are. Venus. Now, uh, in ancient Egypt, Kemet, we find that the um, a lot of the pharaohs during that time of Taurus held the symbol of the Ankh. Now they held the symbol of the Ankh in reverence to, um, to, to, to Taurus because obviously Taurus is an embodiment which is uh, obviously th that's governed by Venus and Venus actually represents the Ankh. You know if you had seen the, the video that I, I, I talk about about the, um, the Orgon Ankh I actually break down in, in short term that the Ankh is actually Venus so uh, this was the representation and the connection to it. So they always had the Ankh. They held the Ankh in reverence to the connection of Isis. Reality, Isis is Venus. They, they held it in representation of that creativity. That, you know, the beauty and the look of the structure which was created in these buildings, monuments, these ancient, you know, these ancient civilized um, um, uh, uh, deities were creating extremely powerful monuments which had deep meaning to the com to compare to the age that we're in now. So, let's keep going. Alright, the desire of the bull. Now we're going to get into the desire of the bull. Let's tap into this. Okay, the bull represents the animal nature 
and Hercules' task was to capture and deliver it to the mainland. From the disciples' point of view, the bull of desire has to be caught and mastered and chased from one point to another in the life of the separated self until the time comes when the aspirant can do what Hercules succeeded in doing, ride the bull. To ride an animal in the ancient myth signifies control. The bull is not slaughtered, it is ridden and guided on the disciples' mastery. So this means that, look, the early picture that I showed you earlier, um, you have the, the bull and you have Apis and that representation of how they communicate. So it's about riding that and connecting with that, being able to, 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 to hold that concentration in the mind. Because in essence, Taurus is the one that is still in the mind because Taurus is able to fix his attention or her attention based upon the fixture of the earth. So, right, on a um, hermetic principle or on the cos cosmological frequency of the laws of uh, the Kabbalion or the laws of Tehuti, or, or thus, we find that um, obviously that as above so below, matter is actually the representation, symbolical meaning of Taurus in essence. And obviously spirit is the manifestation of Aries. Aries manifests itself into Taurus. So as above, so below, here you find the, the, the connection between the two. And once you fix your attention from the higher mind intellect, of Aries which is governed by intuition if you watch my previous video we find that the thought becomes so still that then it fixes itself onto matter which then co-creates the foundation of creation okay now right finally the major task for this sign is to, is, is to matter master the law of attraction and not to be a slave to the lower desires of possession and sexuality in this way Taurus controls and uses matter correctly with spiritual value motivating in this fashion matter is raised up into heaven and free at last of the hold and of the illusions so we know that here we have to master this last figurine this last sign really and truly this is the sign of the building what was constructed was what was because what was is what was came from the highest and then manifested so in essence when you actually read astrology we find that we start from look you know the ages move backwards while the signs move forward now what do i mean the ages now we're talking about the ages they say okay we're moving into the age of aquarius the age of aquarius is actually moving that way we're in the age of pisces according to the you know the equinox the movement the procession and all of that stuff we move like this and the signs move like this the seasons move like this so we look at the universe how it rotates in essence then the, 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 the last sign if it's moving like this then it's obviously going to be Taurus the Taurus is actually not the last sign but the building sign the, as in moving forward okay so we moved from Taurus to Aries and then from Aries, we moved into Pisces, the age that we're in now, into the age of Aquarius, which is the age that we're getting into, that people are talking about, computers, laptops, you know, communication through telepathy, whatever you want to call it, high-tech technology, all of that type of stuff. That's the age of Aquarius. Okay, now, let us go into the, the deeper aspect and higher aspect of Taurus, because there's, so, there's also more. So, now, mythology of sexual Taurus. Okay, so when in mythology it stated that Poseidon created a white bull, that is something that implies the correct use of sexual energy because the bull in itself represents the forces of the blood in the physical body that transforms themselves into sperms and ovum, which, is, which in alchemy is called the salt of the earth. When you go into the ocean, you find that the water is salty, has salt, for the salt of the earth in reality is that matter which is in water, which in this case in the symbol of Poseidon in mythology is the sperm or the ovum of the sexual water that crystallizes. That is the ball of strength of the earth because you know that the sperm and the ovum 
are in their final synthesis and out an outcome of the blood. So this means that you know it tells you the type of sexual energy we're dealing here. Okay. You remember what I was saying earlier in my earlier video? I was saying how Aries represents the ovaries, the you know, the uh, the you know that, that section. But um, in essence, it's you know its projection side is of, obviously of a martial nature, but it's feminine in its esoteric perspective because it's intuitive, whereas um, Taurus is actually a masculine force in its um, in its internal energy, which is controlling the seed, and but its external force is of a um, feminine nature which is the earthly nature and it represents everything that is due and which is from the mother so we find here the connection that the mother is actually uh, to do with Taurus but its project its hidden side is masculine so here's the correlation we also have to look at the inner hidden energies which are governing in this these signs. So we're going to be talking about in future videos about the constellations, the fixed stars. So keep your mind tuned because it's going to be amazing when we tap into this because now you'll be able to look at what we call your birth chart. Okay, your birth chart and those who read Vedic will look at this chart here when they break it down into different parts and corners and so on. We'll start figuring out the constellations, what's going on behind those zodiac signs, behind those zodiac signs, what, what is going on in your chart so you can go even deeper into astrology. So that's in the future videos. Make sure you stay tuned because it's going to be deep. Okay. So, now, uh, just to finalize this, we're going to just talk about the brief aspects of Taurus. Um, Taurus is a great person to have when you're when you when you hold a business. If if you are a person that has a business, having someone uh, working for you as a Taurus is is a wonderful task or a wonderful person to have because I say that Taurus is very fixed. It will keep your work in correct order. It's way of working is so fixed that your building your 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 plan will remain you know your structure will remain because it will hold its plate it will know how to plan it's the you know in in in, in astrology it's the sign which is able to hold things according to to planning to planning structures to put in things in order like not like Capricorn. Capricorn is more like a sign which uh, governs, whereas Taurus is able to structure, to hold, you know, to hold your plate of food. It's able to hold your plate of food. So it's you know, it's, it's, so everything has to be beautiful with with someone that's a Taurus. They're, definitely, it's an important thing for Taurus. You know, they they are great people in in keeping things still. You know, so. Um, in, in relation to family, uh, generally people born under the constellation of Taurus have a, have a hard time learning how to walk quickly. So as a child it may take a while for them to learn how to walk. But once they, are, once they walk, they are able to walk without any issues and they tend to always have a plan right? before they, they get on about doing things. They have a plan. One thing about Taurus, because they are a fixed sign, they find it very difficult to let go. You know, they hold on to things. Remember, they represent possession. They, you know, in ancient times, they represented, look, you look at the pyramids, for God's sake. You know, they represented that gold, you know, that, you know, that, that gold, that like, okay, man, this is what I have. This is what I'm holding, you know. This is what I'm holding, man. This is, you know, remember that it's what you've gained through hardship and hard work. So you don't want to let go of that easy. So a Taurus type of person will hold on to things very tightly. Okay, in astrology, remember in the first clip, first um, image I showed you about the animal. And um, 
what they hold. Now, the throat is governed by Taurus. Communication is governed by Taurus. Someone who writes lyrics is governed by Taurus. It has that Taurus energy because it's to do with the throat. Now, we're talking about on the physical aspect of things as well uh, as on the creative level. The creative side plays through the part of Venus. Okay? And that creativity is the connectivity to the hierophant. The hierophant is actually the 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 symbol for Venus also. Okay, the Earth sign, right? And um, what Venus represents is that creative nature, the guiding force. Venus is like the veil, Isis, Aset. She represents that aspect of us which um, doesn't let us go in through the pillars. In masonry, you have the pillars. She won't let you go in until you master your desires. Get rid of your desires. Get rid of this, you know, these things that are holding you down. And that is the key and the master key of removing the fixed energy and controlling that, taining that fixed force to control that and project it in its right nature so then the nature of that fixed energy becomes stable so you're able to hold that steady you know that steady field of energy so you gotta remember now when we look into astrology right you gotta remember this right keep this in mind that every age governs a sign now if every age governs a sign then it's obvious that Wherever you have your planets in, it's more so probably the, 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 the age that you really um, circulated in, the age that you really participated in. It's the age that, you know, that connected with you more. And those influence you bring into this age. So therefore means that your soul would have wanted to learn something about this age. And this is why you would have come in. Now, in that sense, what happens then, you gain influences of this age. You become... You have some dominance and some connectivity to this age because now you have to learn something about this age to gain something universally to your spirit and then so on and so forth you move to other planetary spheres based upon your your karmic um, debts and so on you know so we move on now um, okay don't forget to get my my um, my my, um, my scalar pendant if you haven't yet you know, if you need protection to strengthen your, your field, your energy body, then you need a scalar pendant that will protect you from the radiation. We live in this computer age now and it's good to reduce that as much as we can. Get the scalar pendant. It's available on my website. Get any of them. And if so, just watch my other videos and they describe what it what is best to get. Mm -hmm.